Today on The Breakfast, despite the extension for the swap of the old Naira note, uncertainty is still high over the availability of the new note. By the Central Bank of Nigeria would have in-depth analysis on the issue. Also on The Breakfast, the federal government is set to release the sum of 1.18 billion Naira for poison pivoting autonomy of universities does this solve the agitation between the federal government and the union. And like always, we'll all so be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning and it's great to know that you are with us this morning. The lineup is quite amazing and uh, we will have, uh, you know, great analysis as we proceed. I am Messi Bopo. Now, as always, we start a conversation with a top trending. These are conversations that Nigerians are having in different spaces, whether online, offline, in different social media spaces, mostly on Twitter. Uh, first of it is that, you know, over the week, we know what's been going on. We're just very close to the elections. The countdown is still ongoing. And also the countdown for the uh, collection of the PVC as well. I mean, we're supposed to be on the 31st of January. But that's a different case. Uh, because the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has extended the deadline for the collection of permanent voters' cards, we call the PVCs, uh, to February the 5th, 2023. Now, according to the National Commissioner and the Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, the move followed a meeting of INEC's resident electoral commissioners, that's the REC, and also... Uh, following reports from the various states and discussion with resident electoral commissioners, uh, they decided to further extend the PVCs in its local government, I mean in all of the local government offices nationwide, by additional one week. So the ongoing collection of PVC nationwide would definitely continue and end on the 5th of uh, February 2023. Uh, this is the second time in my interest to know that the commission is extending the PVC collection nationwide. And this will be the last, according to the umpire, uh, to exercise, uh, to allow people and not disenfranchise uh, to cast their vote. Now, the collection period has further been extended, just like we have mentioned, by additional two hours and will start at 9 a.m. and end at 5 p.m. daily, including Saturdays and Sundays. Nigerians have... Uh, been urged, I mean, those who have not yet picked up their PVCs have been urged to go so, I mean, go out and do so and report any sharp practices in PVC collection centers. The commission also ensures that the, uh, they will also act on all of these reports. The commission will continue, according to the uh, chairman, he said the commission will continue to act on all report cases of sharp practices during the ongoing PVC collection and will ensure that no Nigerian is disadvantaged and those that carried out valid registration have an opportunity of collecting their PVCs. But um, it's very commendable. I mean, we must commend the umpire, that's INEC, uh, for the extension. Although you have different school of thought who said it would, would have been just been great for us not to have a time, you know, to the end of the collection of the PVC. Maybe just a day before the elections, then you have an opportunity to walk in and pick your PVC. That there shouldn't be a timeline as to when uh, PVCs would be issued. You know, let's say, oh, you can't collect your PVC from X, Y, Z time. But that's a conversation for another time. We say that it's very, uh, I mean, what INEC has done is commendable and we applaud them. Well, however, the, the conversations and the concerns that have been raised, uh, you cannot ignore them. Uh, well, Extending the deadline, does it solve the problem? Because there are also complaints where people say it's not about, you know, the extension, but the availability of the PVCs. Too many Nigerians have complained. There are too many excuses, especially those who actually applied for transfer. Let's not forget that if you had relocated, you know, from you had moved from a particular center or location between 2019 up until this moment, then it's possible that you might not uh, have your cards. But there was provision for all of that. 
Now, there are complaints where people have not been able to collect their PVCs. They get there and they say, hey, uh, the PVCs are not available. These are the issues. So we're, we're also um, believing, we want to believe that, you know, with the extension for the collection of the PVC, INEC is also going to be working very hard to ensure that these PVCs are available. Because what, what sense does it make if you make an extension and then the cards are not available, the people keep going uh, to the centers to collect their PVCs and then they are being told that the PVCs are not available. So that's one thing that we should pay attention to. And I think that if we look at the banks, if you have an instant card, because uh, there are some banks where you walk into and you want to get your uh, ATM card, there's also provision for instant card. So if it's a provision for instant card, what's the reason why we can't have uh, instant PVCs? Is there a problem? If the banks actually have that technology, then it shouldn't be a problem, you know, printing this PVC. But another question that uh, begs for a lot of answer is, we know the statistics has been rel uh, rolled out for the number of persons who have not collected their PVCs. Then you begin to ask, so why do you have a lot of persons uh, that particular number, the number it's on the high, and then you still have people who are willing to collect it, but the, the PVCs are not available. Uh, so, so we just hope that, you know, the commission would pay attention to all of these issues. There's also issues of sharp practices. There are too many complaints and challenges, but we hope that with this extension that INEC will put our acts together, they'll be working 247365 to ensure that Nigerians are not disenfranchised because that's exactly, you know, where we're headed. So yes, if you've not collected your PVC, uh, there, there's an opportunity for you now. You have an extension. I think that's going to be up until the 17th, you know, uh, looking at the details of that report of February. Uh, so yes, walking to your, you know, local government areas and ensure that you collect that. And some of the concerns that Nigerians have raised about the PVC collections, including sharp practices. INEC has also said that it's important that you report all of these cases. It would be handled accordingly. So we move away from that. Uh, there are also concerns about uh, increase uh, of the cash swap. Okay, so let me take it this way. The Central Bank of Niger, that's a CBN, had extended deadline. So it feels like we're at the time where there's an extension of deadline, you know, for the swap of the old Naira notes at the, the commercial banks by 10 days. So yes, extension for, uh, you know, the PVC collection. There's also an extension for the swap of the old Naira notes by 10 days. And that was done in a press statement where Godwin and Mefli, the Central Bank governor, of uh, Nigeria said that the new deadline is February the 10th, that's 2023. So there's a lot of time from now for you to deposit all of the funds that you have. Now, however, Nigerians will still be able to deposit their old notes directly with the CBN up until the 17th of February. So there's a mix up there. I like to correct that impression uh, with this, uh, with the PVC, okay? So the swap for the notes is for uh, the CBN. It's for the money. February 17, 2023. So you can still do that up until. And then for the PVC, it's for February the 10th. That's according to INEC. Now, now this is what they describe as the grace period. The CBN governor, the CBN itself will say that there's a grace period. Nigerians have been complaining about the inability to swap their old notes for the new notes uh, that's been designed to end. It was supposed to end January 31st. That would have been tomorrow. Uh, the deadline. And I know the kind of anxiety that's been going on. I know the kind of confusion because a lot of person had stopped collecting these funds as of last week. So yes, uh, the, the new Naira note, maybe we need to do a refresher, is that it was designed, it was believed to help target st stop the uh, vote buying in 2023 general elections. Uh, it was also uh, scheduled for February 25th and March 11th, that elections. We're having the presidential elections for February 25th and March 11th. The House of Representatives so far with this, as, 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 as much as a lot of Nigerians have been very excited about the extension given by the Central Bank of Nigeria, but it's quite different for the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on New Naira Redesign and Naira Swap Policy. They have rejected the 10-day extension granted by the Central Bank of Nigeria. That's a CBN for the exchange of the O note. Now, in a reaction, the ad hoc committee chairman, uh, the leader, he said that 
the extension is not in compliance with Section 20, Subsection 3, 4, and 5 of the CBN Act. That's Al Hassan. Uh, he said that Nigeria is a developing economy and also a nascent democracy and must respect the principle of the rule of law. And so the House would go ahead to sign the arrest warrant to comply the CBN governor to appear before the ad hoc committee, uh, describing the extension as just a mere political gimmicks to further deceive Nigerians and worsen their economic and social livelihood. Uh, that's what, you know, uh, the ad hoc committee chairperson is quoted to say. He said that the, the governor must appear before or stand the reeks of being arrested on the strength of legislative wits signed by the speaker, which is today. So uh, you, we probably might just be at a time where we hear breaking news that, you know, the CBN governor has been arrested just to comply him to appear before, you know, the committee and answer some question. That's also on the one hand. But uh, it's okay to also have an extension. Now, there are several school of thoughts. There are a lot of, uh, some people would like to say there are conspiracy theories as regards, you know, the uh, narrow note redesign, the essence it was meant for. I mean, we've, we've had categorically from the CBN, there are several reasons why this note was redesigned. But one of it is to ensure that, you know, the, this, those political gladiators don't take advantage to stop the issue of vote buying. And that's the essence of all of this. Uh, but, but, but it's not about, you know, giving the extension because I feel like if, if an extension, we say, submit the period which was being put out, it's enough for anybody, an organization, individual, you know, to put out your uh, fonts out there, the old notes. But that's not entirely the case. I mean, if we were really sincere with the issue of uh, having the new narrow notes in circulation, it's just simple. In the course of transaction, as you go about to put out the old narrow notes in the market, then you begin to get the new one. And as the old ones getting back, you have the ATMs not dispensing, the banks not dispensing. That's how to, you know, take that entirely out of the market. But that's not the case because up until this morning, as we speak, you have a lot of ATMs, PO, uh, the POS operators dispensing, giving out old notes, including the banks. And it's quite worrisome. So the question is, what exactly is going on? If we say we need to swap and we have the extension so that we are able to return all of these funds, I think that if we're chunking enough of the new note into the economy, it would be all right uh, for us not to even begin to ask for the swap because it's different. Let's assume that I have the old notes. Then I go to a shop. I walk into a shop to buy. And then I'm buying, uh, you know, product or goods worth 50,000 naira. Right. That's going to get to someone who's going to take it out. And eventually... When you get back to the ATMs or to the banks, you're getting the new notes. But I don't think that that's the case. It feels like you're putting the new old notes into the system and then you're still getting the old notes. But there are also, you know, other quarters who have said that the reason for all of this is that prior to this time, when all of this, you know, policies and uh, statements were being put out. You had people who went out, the politicians mostly, there was a compromise with bank managers who sold out the old, the new notes to the political elite. And that's why it's not even available for the common man. <laughs> it reminds me of Bonoboy's song. It's not available for the common man to get. So uh, this bank's MDs or the commercial banks have engaged themselves, have gotten into the, you know, some sort of agreement and they have compromised the entire system. And that's why we seem to have, you know, the non-availability. These are some of the thoughts that, you know, we have flying around everywhere. And uh, I think it's very important that the CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Godwin Emefli himself, speaks to this particular issue of the non-availability of the Naira note, uh, the new Naira note to be precise. Yes, it's very commendable that we have an extension of time, but what difference does it make if we still get into the, I mean, you go to the banking halls, uh, you go to the ATMs and every cash point, then you're still faced with the issue of uh, the old notes. You're still given the old note. It, it doesn't really make any sense. So yes, let's, let's have the CBN speak particularly to the issue of the availability and the non-availability of the new Naira notes, as it were. But however, it's important that you take advantage of the spirit. I mean, if you have a lot of money, which you I'm just imagining how much, how many days it would take for you to, you know, just walk into the bank and deposit all of those funds. 
I'm out on a top training is quite unfortunate, very saddening. It was just a very black day for a lot of persons, you know, in Lagos and in Nigeria. Not necessarily Lagos. Yes, it happened in Lagos, but it's a sad day for everyone. As a container, uh, there was a container that fell on a downfall bus at Ojo Elegba Bridge, uh, claiming nine lives. Uh, according to report and investigation, it was a 20 feet laden container that fell yesterday on a commercial bus in Ojo Elegba, area of Lagos, like I rightly mentioned. It crushed nine passengers to death. Now, the nine uh, victims uh, recovered comprised of four adult males. Uh, so you have four adult males, three adult females, and a girl child and a boy child. So you have two children at the end of the day. Uh, further investigation also revealed that the commercial bus was picking up passengers at the bus stop along the Oju Elegba bridge where the truck lost control and fell over the side of the bridge. Now, and, uh, according to, you know, uh, reports, it was stated that the earlier respondents at the scene of the incident were the officials of the Lagos State Management, and we uh, commend them uh, very well. We say it was good that they were at the scene immediately. That's the Lagos State Management Agency. Uh, they suspended the container and cut off the top of the bus just to rescue uh, some persons. Unfortunately, a, a woman uh, was rescued. She was the only one that was rescued, according to that report, and was taken to the trauma center. The eyewitness report said that the truck driver wanted to block the bus from overtaking him. And trust me, I see that every other time. And I know that you see that as well. Necessarily, it might not just be in Lagos State, but in other parts of the country. It's, it seemed like a practice. So most times, if you are on the steering and you're driving, it's usually like a game on the road. And so, you know, the, these truck drivers will try to uh, meander their way between the two lanes. So you find themselves on this side and on this side, not allowing you to pass. But usually what... It's suspected that you should understand. There's no need trying to, you know, rush and trying to get in the way with these guys. Because, I mean, I remember once upon a time, my mother said that whenever you are driving, you should always remember that you're the only sane person on the road. It's just, you know, a way to stay alive. You're the only one that has uh, your senses all together. So, yes, it's important that you pay attention to yourself. As if you see someone acting in that way, there's no need for game. It's, it's not the Mario game, like I say. Life is not that Mario game. So growing up, if you know the Mario game, you know that you have one, two, three, four lives. So if you, if you lost that one, then you would probably have three more lives. And then you have two more lives. And so you can be careful when you just have one. We have to be careful at all times. But it's quite unfortunate that this is happening. And there's no way we're going to talk about this without making reference to the government. A lot of, uh, you know, Nigerians have taken to, you know, different social media spaces. It's so unfortunate. Uh, you, you can't imagine these persons who set out of their houses hoping that they were going to get to their destination. Maybe they were going to church. Maybe they were going to spend some time with their family. You never can tell. I mean, it's a Sunday. So usually it's just a time where people take out time, you know, to visit, to go to church and, you know, spend time with their loved ones and what have you. And that unfortunate incident happened. Some of the deaths that we experience in our country won't really happen if we, you know, put our acts together as a government. And the issue of governance is not just about, you know, contesting for elections, campaigning, just as well, the period of campaigning and politicking, and then seeking for office, getting this office, and that's the end of it. And then you sit back. It's about providing security for the lives of the people. You know, the security and, you know, the protection of the life of the people shall be a priority. That's what it is. I don't think that we should constantly fold our arms and wait for when we have bandits and armed men, you know, armed robbers and kidnappers. And that's when we talk about security. Because security is encompassing. And so why do we have to have this incident every other time? So it feels like it's an annual or, you know, by annual event that happens, there must always be a trailer incident. Something must happen. It must crush. And we can't continue like this. Do we even learn anything from all of these experiences and deaths of the people? Why have we not taken, you know, precaution? Is there something that we can do as a government to prevent all of this happening? Is there a possibility that, you know, we have... Because for every other time you have the vehicles on the road, the, the some kind of test, especially heavy-duty vehicles... All of these containers, they should have some level of checks 
that will be carried out on them before they are being put on the road. Do they even meet the requirement? The driver that's even also driving, there's some kind of test and evaluation that should be carried on all of those persons. But we seem not to pay attention to the lives of people, and we take that too lightly. And it's so unfortunate that every other time this is always the case. It could have been anyone right there. It could have, it could have been anyone. It, it can't be you. You can't even take out the fact that, yes, it's a downfall driver. What if it was a private car? It could, it could be anyone. So we can't. I think that it's just a high call for governance at all levels, especially for the Lagos State government. Once upon a time, we remember there was a deterrence, uh, you know, the rails, some kind of metal that deterred all of that, you know, to happen, you know. But, you know, this is entirely not the case. We, we can't continue like this. I don't think it's rocket science for us to sit back and look out for ways and means where we can protect, you know, the lives and properties of the people who elected us who we have been called to serve. We can't continue like this. So yes, please, it's, it's, it's just a call that uh, the Lagos state government, we know that this is a period of politicking, there will just be a transition, whether or not there will be a retainership or there will be a new government. But we need to look at this issue, the issues that you know this state, the Lagos state uh, faces every other time accident, containers, and what have you. I'm sure that there's a way out. It's not impossible. And Mission Impossible can also be impossible. We all, I mean, our hearts and prayers are with those who have lost their loved ones in the course of this accident. Uh, we can only pray that, you know, they find comfort. And we can only also, you know, speak to the government in power to wake up to her responsibility and protect lives and properties of her citizens, those who are paying taxes every other time. And that's the essence of government. That's the much we can take this morning on our top trending. We take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. We have Okunabo Nkotaria who will be joining us this morning on Off the Press. Please stay with us. <laughs>